Hey everyone, Technically Jeff here, and today we're gonna to be installing and testing out this Samsung solid state drive in my PlayStation 4 Pro. So before we swap out the regular hard drive for the new solid state drive, I'm gonna measure the load times for Call of Duty so we can get an idea of what kind of improvements we see with the solid state drive. In addition to being quieter and not getting as hot, it should be a decent amount faster. And Call of Duty is a pretty large game, so it'll be a good test. And it took about 18 seconds to get to the Activision screen there. And to fully load into the message of the day screen, we're at 33 seconds. Now let's load up a Warzone match and see how long it takes. And we're at just under 32 seconds to load up to the loadout selection screen. Now that we have those benchmarks, let's swap in the solid state drive. First, we want to back things up. So we'll go to settings, system, backup and restore, and backup PS4. You can connect an external hard drive or a high capacity USB drive. And you go through and select what you want to back up, what specific apps, that sort of thing. Then you go to backup. And it will take a little bit. I ended up going back and selecting less games and just re-downloading them. Then once it's backed up, you turn off the PS4 fully. And we can get to the installation. First, I'll go ahead and take out the Samsung solid state drive from the packaging. I got a one terabyte 870 Evo, which is a pretty inexpensive unit that is a direct plug and play upgrade over the normal hard drive. I'll link in the description for you guys. And it looks good. Now to open up the PS4. On the back here, there's this cover that will just pull on and it just snaps out. Then there's this little screw here. And it's very tiny, so I need to go get a different screwdriver, so I'll be right back. All right, I got my screwdriver with the various bits here. I'll grab the small Phillips. And there we go. I'll go ahead and remove this screw. Yeah. 
and the housing for the hard drive will just slide right out. And there it is. You can see the new solid state drive is the same basic size and we'll just go right in its place. Now we'll remove these four screws holding it in place. And the old drive just slides out of the bay. And we'll insert the new solid state drive in its place. Now you can see this new one isn't as deep as the regular hard drive, so I'll push it up a little bit to get the screw holes to line up. And I'll put the screws back in. And there we go. Now we're good to put it back in the PS4. We'll go ahead and slide it right back in its slot. Make sure it's fully seated in there. And I'll put that screw back in that holds it in place. Then we'll snap the cover back on. You want to make sure you tuck it in the right side first. There we go. And that's it. Now it's time for the software. I'll link it in the description, but you want to go to the PlayStation site and download the software to a USB drive. You want to be sure to download the PS4 console reinstallation file here. Then you want to go to your USB drive and create a folder called PS4. And then inside that folder, you're going to want to create another folder called update. Then here you're going to want to paste in the update file that you just downloaded and you want to make sure that the name is ps4update.pup. And now we can install it. So I inserted the USB drive in the PS4. Now I'll turn it on and put it into safe mode by holding the power button for seven seconds. It 
and it will load up. I have to connect the controller using the cable since it's reset. And we'll go to Initialize PS4 Reinstall System Software. And it says Device Not Connected. So what I found was my USB drive design made it so it wouldn't go all the way in on the front of my PS4. So I had to turn it around and insert it in the USB port in the back of the PS4. Trying it again here, now it works. And I will go to continue, and it will install the file, which takes around three minutes, and then it will restart automatically. That brings us to an initial setup here. This part is just temporary until we restore the backup that we made. I'll put in my backup USB drive, then I'll go to settings, system, backup and restore, and this time restore PS4, and I'll select the backup that I made. And then it will restart and restore. This process can take a long time, just like the backup can. Even with only backing up a few things, this still took almost 10 minutes. Once that's done, it restarts again. and loads up with the settings that I had previously. Now I can go into my library and re-download my various games. I do have to sign back into the PlayStation Network. and then everything can download. Now let's go test out those load times. So this time it only took 11 and a half seconds to get to the Activision screen for Call of Duty. That's seven seconds faster than before, almost 40% faster, so that's good. And to get to the message of the day, that took 23 seconds, a full 10 seconds faster than before. So it's definitely looking promising. Now let's check the time to load a Warzone match.
This time we're at 30 seconds, so not much of a time savings there. That can be impacted by network speeds too. So the biggest test is the initial load up, which is definitely faster. And on games where you have campaigns and things like that, you'll definitely see faster load times. So overall, I'm very pleased with the upgrade. Installation was easy, and not only does it load things faster, but it's much quieter. You literally can't hear my PS4 running anymore, which is great. Sometimes it would get pretty loud. And that's partly due to no moving parts like a hard drive and partly due to it running cooler so the fans don't need to run as much. So it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade for me. And again, I got the one terabyte Samsung 870 Evo. Right now on Amazon, it's only $59, which is a really great deal. And if you want more storage space, the two terabyte version is only $99. So again, I'll post those links in the description for you guys. I saw a few sellers at various prices, so you wanna make sure you get the one that's the lowest price. This is from Amazon Direct. But anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions on the upgrade. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.